Hello everyone and welcome back to the blog. Today I'm going to give a quick video about the UK CAT exam. Now this is a entrance exam used by medical schools and quite unique to it is the fact that uh, both undergraduate and graduate entry medical schools use this exam. For me, I only took this exam and I applied because looking at the GAMSAT, I didn't feel comfortable taking it because it was £270. It involved me having to do A-level biology, chemistry and physics again and I just wasn't comfortable with the amount of time I had to prepare to make sure I did a good job of it and kind of justify spending that amount of money in the exam. But I decided to take UK CAT instead. This did limit me a lot with the universities I could apply to with my A-level grades. Um, so ideally I was aiming for Warwick, Newcastle and King's College London. That's where I'm at. I took my UK CAT exam on the 14th of September 2017 and my score was 695 with a band 1. So what does that mean? <laughs> 695 is the aggregate of your scores. So you take the test with four sections. So that's your quantitative reasoning, your verbal reasoning, your abstract reasoning, and your decision making. And these are totaled into that score that you see. You then take your situational judgment test, and that is classified into bands about how are you done. Band one is the best, and I think it goes down to band four. So ideally, you want to be getting band one, band two. The UK CAT is a source of a headache for most pre-meds because it isn't the easiest exam however it's not really the topics that are hard it's the amount of time you have to do it in which is where the difficulty lies you have to be on it and you have to know exactly what you're doing and this is where preparation comes in some say you can't prepare for the uk cat i think that is ridiculously wrong <laughs> i started off getting an average score of 560 and then got 695 at the end so it is evidence that if you work hard and you know the tricks you can do well so this is why i've made this video to help you guys do your best and to hopefully push that score up a little bit more so the main resources i used when i was studying for my uk cat was this book which if you're taking the uk cat you've probably got already um the difference is uh, you may see a lot of the 1000 UK CAT questions rolling about. This has 1250 and it is the exact same book as 1000 questions. I learnt the hard way, I didn't open the book before I bought it and ended up buying two books of the same. Um, the extra 250 questions comes from the decision making section because Again, it was a new section um, and my we were the first year to take it as part of our actual UK CAT. So I do recommend getting this book, but how you use it is up to you. But the way I used it wasn't for speed, wasn't for trying to get the best score possible. It was for making sure that I understood how the UK CAT worked. So I used it to practice my questions, make sure I had the techniques down, um, understand kind of the way they're asking for certain things, recognise patterns in questions. So for me, that was what I used this book for. Um, so towards nearer my UK cat time, I actually didn't open this book that much. After I'd got through this book, I then moved on to Medify, which is an online website. I don't normally promote paid pre-med things, however, Medify saved my score. I increased dramatically on it and it is the one kind of thing I re will recommend to anyone. It was for me, it was £40 for two months. So it's not extortionate and the money you pay is well worth it. So if you want to go and check it out, it's pretty easy to find. But I use that to make sure my timing was up, that my technique was down and to see my score progression because it also is really nice to see you improving and you can't really get that from a book. That's kind of how I prepared for most of it. The week before my UK CAT I was actually on medical work experience. Um, I did have a lot of bus rides to do so I downloaded the UK CAT app on my phone and just sat there doing questions in the bus and the car and essentially when I could practice I practiced. So my advice is to do a little bit each day. Make sure you target your weaker sections every day and do alternate days with the other ones. So I spent about 65% of my time practicing abstract reasoning and quantitative reasoning and then situational judgment, judgment <laughs> and verbal reasoning and decision making were kind of rotated on day by day. So that's my general advice. Let's get into the specifics of each section. Let's begin quantitative reasoning. It is a section most medics don't really worry about because a lot of you will have taken maths to A-level. However, I'm one of those medics that didn't. Maths was never really my strongest subject. I had to work really hard at it 
and although I got fairly good GCSE results, I was quite proud of them, I did not want to take it to A level and I dropped it like a hot rod. I thought this was going to affect me in the UK CAT, however the level of mathematical skills you need for the UK CAT are GCSE level only. So I actually had a fighting chance here. The biggest kind of tip I can recommend for tackling the quantitative section is make sure you have the method down. There is no point trying to sprint off like a hare when you don't know what you're doing. Take the time to learn the method. I spent hours on BBC Bite Size. <laughs> you know that website you went to when you were studying for GCSEs? I spent hours on it as a third year neuroscience student. I loved it and it taught me the techniques that I needed to get through the UK CAT and get a score of 770 in my quantitative reasoning section. Something I only dreamed about beforehand and to me still to this day I don't know how I got it but there we go. Another big tip with the maths is to figure out how to use that damn calculator. <laughs> it is everyone's biggest headache but there are a few keyboard shortcuts that you can use. One is Alt C to reveal the calculator and then backspace is for clearing. Now you can't backspace like you do on a scientific calculator, you get rid of the entire thing you've typed and this is where the whiteboard comes in. Note down every single answer and every single step you do. This is not only because that backspace thing on the calculator is a nightmare when you're trying to quick complicated calculations but it's also you can easily see where you might have gone wrong and in the UK cat I saw that and it was a silly mistake but it wouldn't have been one that I recognised if I didn't write it down. However the whiteboard is permanent so they give you a permanent marker but you don't get a lot of whiteboard space you get I think it's like four sheets of double-sided paper and you've still got four other sections to do so be sparing but make sure you get it down and that is my tips for the quantitative reasoning section. The next section is verbal reasoning and for some reason it seems to trip everyone up. For me it wasn't a massive source of stress but it certainly was an easier section. This is because you have to read a lot in a little space of time and then answer questions on it. So the first thing I can recommend is learn the power of skim reading. Don't read every word, just get a gist of what the paragraph is going on about and where about certain key themes come in. Then read the question, figure out what it's asking you and go back to where you saw that theme. Find a word. Read it and then read around the word. This sounds really stupid, but there is some sense to this. The UK cat in this section, although they say they don't like to catch it out, but it will ask you a question and then give you the correct answer but then also just next to it it will give you the answer that will be true if you didn't read around the word that you had read so for example it could be asking you about neural connections let's say you can tell I'm a neuro person and the question could be asked what um, what kind of connection serves well in human brains if you've just skim read that article and saw the word brains and neural connections and read it, that question, two went sentences up, may have been talking about monkey brains, which are different to human brains. So, and they will, they will put that answer in there. So just be aware that the answer may not always be what you first think it is. Make sure that there's no other words that can contradict it before you put that answer down. Abstract reasoning. Um, I think everyone kind of tends to struggle on this as a cohort but it will come to you and I wish I could kind of give you this magic formula about how to make it work but it really is just practice. It will click and I didn't think it would. One day I just sat down and suddenly I was like oh of course and I could nine times out well that's a bit generous six times out of ten get the answer right and that was that was good enough for me. For abstract reason it's about learning the patterns of the questions that come up they can't make up a completely different thing for each section so there will be some common themes that keep coming up one of these is edges if you quickly count the edges on the images that you're faced you often see there's a correlation with something else in a picture whether that be color whether that be positioning but edges are always a really good shout to go by when you're faced with arrows look at where they're pointing if they're with other images are they pointing to ones that have only got four sides? 
pointing to ones that are always linked to a different shape. If you've only got arrows, look up where they, like how many are up, how many are down, and does this correlate with the number? Because nine times out of 10, that will quite often be what's coming up. Just remember, it is practice, unfortunately, in this section. You just got to get to know the style of the questions that they're gonna ask you. Decision making. This is, as I said, a new part of the UK CAT exam. It's a bit odd, but it tests on how you come to conclusions and make decisions under pressure. It can involve weird things such as every globber is a fisher, but not every fisher is a globber, but every Sasquatch is a fisher. And you've got to come up with a Venn diagram to demonstrate this. So this is also where the whiteboard comes into play draw things out because there is no point sitting there wasting time trying to figure out what that Venn diagram is going to look like in your head. Draw it out because eventually you can go right that's what it is, where's the answer, click done. It is very very easy to get sidetracked by the rest of the pretty Venn diagrams that are coming up but just make sure you do use that whiteboard and remember use it sparingly. There's also a section that you should use the calculator in um, they do like coming up with Venn diagrams that have got crossovers and they want you to work out percentages. So just make sure you take the time to slowly count out the answers that are there. Make sure you've got your maths down and be confident. It is a bit of a weird section, but it tends to be one of the nicer sections because it's not complicated maths. It's just can you read a table and can you visualise something in your head. The hardest part about this section I feel was probability and again this just comes down to your um, quantitative uh, skill. Don't stress about the questions that you can't do. Don't spend a minute on them trying to struggle for it. Do the ones you can do, get through them and then if you've got time at the end come back to them. But there is no use trying to struggle for a question you just know is not your type. And finally we have situational judgement. For me, reaching this part of the UK cat was amazing because I knew that all the hard parts are out of the way. And I quite enjoyed the situational judgement because it kind of gives you that first insight as to what it's going to be like to be a doctor. However, the hardest part of this is putting on your goody two-shoes brain. A lot of what the UK cat thinks is right is not necessarily what you're going to end up doing as a doctor or as a medical student. So you just kind of need to be, what should I do in this situation, not what would I do in the situation? You're often asked to rank uh, scenarios as well and quite often there'll be the one that you know is the thing to do, one that you definitely do not do and then there'll be two pesky ones in the middle and you're like well they're both equally bad as good so where do I rank them? The mindset you need here is to think about well which is the worst or which is the best out of the two? Ignore the other two and just look at them individually and soon you'll see that there are some subtle differences in there. But as I said, it's about being a goody two-shoes in this section. Use it as a bit of relaxation that you've finally got to the end of the difficult part of the UK CAT exam and just enjoy it. I'd recommend practicing it at least once daily if you are struggling on it. Make sure you read uh, Good Practice for Doctors because that often gives you a lot of insight as to how kind of the GMC in the UK cat I've got a lot of their questions from so definitely look at that so that is my individualized advice for the UK cat or UK um, sections but overall I really really recommend approaching approach, approach approaching <laughs> it like a tortoise and not a hat take it slowly do not try and do six hours a day for seven days a week until you reach your exam. I actually forgot that I had to do my UK CAT. Didn't really hit full run practice before August and my exam was in the middle of September. I did maximum four hours a day. I was not sitting there all day at my laptop. And if you're getting to the point where sitting down and doing it is becoming a bit of a drag, then stop. Give yourself a day off and then come back to it but don't attack as much as you have been doing each day. I made sure that I tackled my worst sections each day which was the abstract reasoning and quantitative reasoning and I made sure that, that was done every day, that I'd done enough every day, probably about half an hour on each because after half an hour you kind of want to sit there and cry if you're having a bad day and then I rewarded myself by doing some of my stronger questions. Don't punish yourself each day but don't always below your stronger section. You can easily get 20 more marks from focusing on your weaker sections then maybe the two that you'd get on your stronger section and that was the advice that was given to me and that was what I kind of targeted. Another bit of advice that comes from personal experience is to not shell out hundreds or thousands of pounds on UK CAT courses. You can find 
everything that you need online. I did fall into this trap of going to a UK cat crash course. It was only a day long course and I'd got 75% off. I went there and they spent about 30 seconds on auditive reasoning, hardly touch abstract, did full pelt on verbal and I'm just sitting there and I'm like, this is not useful. I was sat next to people who had paid the full price for this course and essentially they'd paid 200 pounds for a pen. It was useless and although maybe it'd been better if I'd done it close to the beginning of my UK cat prep but to be honest you can get all the information that they said to us over the day online for free. So thank you very much for watching, I hope it has been helpful. Um, I do realise the struggle that you guys are going through because it was a complete nightmare for me in the summer of 2017 but you can do it, just remember you are a tortoise not a hare. Thank you very much for watching, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video.